Hey, hey, besties and bosses, happy Tuesday. How are you all doing? How's your week going? I think at this point, most of us have gotten into this rhythm with lockdown. And if you're anything like me, I already don't know what day of the week it is having a business and being an entrepreneur at home. And I feel like with lockdown, I literally don't know the day of the week it is. So half the time I forget it's Tuesday, but it is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'm so excited to hang out with you all today and to dive into today's topic. I want to chat all about a really surprising thing. I think at least it will be surprising for you. I don't think it's what you think it is. A surprising thing that is potentially sabotaging your business right now. What is really interesting about today's topic is this is something I've been wanting to chat about for a while and I just haven't had a chance to do a live stream around it. And I'm just noticing, um, and hey, whoever's joining on just say hello, let me know who's on live with me. This is a topic I was saying that I've been wanting to chat about for a while and I just haven't had a chance to, you know, slot it in with the live streams and what I've been noticing with Corona and just with what's been going on, this is a conversation I'm having more with clients right now. So I think it's very prevalent and this is being kicked up even more as we're all navigating Corona and lockdown and just all the different things that are coming up. However, what we're going to talk about today is absolutely something that was applicable before Corona and will be applicable long after. And it's such an important thing to know in business and that I want to have just a really important conversation around because I find this is something that sabotages so many business owners and this is something in particular that I the first client I helped scale to a million dollars this is something we spent a lot of time talking around and I'm going to say right now it is we're not talking about social media we're not talking about the news we're not even talking about comparisonitis because I know that's probably what you think this is Tristan hello hey nice to have you here hello hello Happy Tuesday. Y'all, that was my chair, not me making weird bodily noises. Okay, any guesses on what we're gonna chat about today? I'm curious to hear if anyone has a guess. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not social media, it is not comparisonitis, and it is not the news. But this is something that I find many people are addicted to, and we're gonna chat about why that is and where that comes from, because this isn't to make you wrong. I really want you to understand what's going on in the brain. This is something very that's getting kicked up extra right now. And it is something that will absolutely sabotage your business sustainability and your ability to scale your business. Any guesses? I'm gonna pull up my notes here just, just so I don't forget. I'm teasing this out because once I say this, I don't want you all to hop off. Um, but what I wanna do is really talk about what this is, how this shows up in business, what's going on in the brain, and then what I think is an important antidote to what we're talking about. So the addiction I see come up so often for business owners, particularly for my creative business owners and for any of you ha who have experienced, I say trauma with a lowercase t or even trauma with a capital T and this isn't to um, cause a trigger for anyone in this conversation, but for any of you who have experienced things growing up that you might, that might fall into that trauma category and have had you know, patterns in the brain, you have had responses that you have created as a way to create safety for yourself and as a way to cope in the world and as just general coping mechanisms. And for any of you who might have um, come, who, who find you have patterns in your life, which I find a lot of creatives do, where you're a bit attention seeking because that's the way you validate your enoughness and feeling, you know, that good enough, that, that tendon, that self-worth. This, I fall into this category, so there's no shame in that. If you fall into any of this, this might be something you find come up in your business. And what that is, is an addiction to drama. So many of us are hardwired and addicted to drama. And it's a really fascinating thing how this shows up in life. And I'm going to use some, I'll share some examples later and how this shows up in business. The reason this is particularly important right now and how this affects the business is with what's going on in the world the reason we tend to be addicted to drama it's an attention seeking behavior if you think about um what drama dramatic events what drama creates it tends to create a a um what's the word i'm looking for here the the fringe benefit of of attention of sometimes we get that that soothing that happens when we get the attention from drama we get that attention we get that sense of self-worth so particularly for those of you and again this isn't not calling anyone out here this is very 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 normal stuff and i talk with so many clients about this but particularly for those of you who have learned to the way i can get my my self-worth validated the way i can get my self-esteem validated the way i can feel good enough is by kicking up some attention seeking behavior some drama in my life that tends to 
um, that tends to get me, you know, that people give me a high five or people pay attention to me or maybe I learned my mom or my dad, you know, even if it was negative attention, gave me attention growing up. For those of you who have learned this pattern and have this pattern in your brain, what we want to be really mindful of right now as we're in a situation that is heightened drama as we turn on the news that's going to trigger that or that is also kicking up some of the loneliness and you know we're tending not to feel as heard online because there's so many more people which tends to trigger that want for attention seeking and drama we want to be particularly mindful that we're not using our business as a way to self-soothe and that we're not creating drama in our business and that we're not confusing what can feel boring in business as a problem and create problems that don't exist, which is something I think I talk about a lot. So what I mean by this is if you're a little addicted to drama or a little addicted to that attention seeking behavior as a way to fill up your, your self-worth meter or as a way to cope as a coping mechanism, because this is a pattern your brain has learned. Again, this is not making you wrong. These are things that we tend to learn as children, as young adults, as ways to cope with situations. Our brains are not designed to be business owners and to thrive and succeed. Our brains are designed to keep us safe and to make us feel comfortable. So if you have these patterns, there is no shame in that. Very normal, but we want to identify that because what I find in business, business success, business sustainability tends to come from things in business that can feel very boring, that can feel very repetitive, that can feel very mundane. The goal in business, if you want sustainability and if you want to scale your business to the next level, is to get systems and processes in place that work for you, not you know copy and paste someone else's process, but a system or process that works for you that you can rinse and repeat. And the more you rinse and repeat a process that works for you, the more you're bringing in income in your business in a way that is very predictable, that's very sustainable, and then you know how to scale your business, how to either add on other offers or to hire things out, how people can come in so that you're working less to make more money. When we talk about sustainability and scalability in business, that's the goal, right? I think that's what we can all agree we want. We wanna be able to make more money doing less work in less time. I myself, I can't work any more hours, right? But if I wanna keep making money, I need to find a way to scale my income. I wanna scale the money I'm bringing in without having to create more work in my business. What is often behind the ability to scale and even just that sustainability, and this is particularly right now, but this will be, there's like a weird glare on the screen, y'all. Can you see that? Um, oh, I fixed it. <gasps> That's so exciting. Um, particularly right now with, I think just so much noise going on like, on online right now what what tends to happen and raise your hand i know i know some of you have felt this way is when we're in business we're passion driven right we're creatives when things start to feel boring when we have those processes and systems that are working for us that are actually creating when we have things that are actually going to create that sustainability for us what it can start to do is feel very boring. It can feel not exciting. And if you're passion driven, if you're like, my business is meant to be exciting, it's meant to juice me up, it is meant to give me all of these wonderful, amazing things. And there is an addiction to drama. There is an addiction in the brain that says, uh, when I have some of this drama, when I have some of this attention seeking behavior, this creates attention for me. This creates love for me. This creates people telling me I'm good enough. This creates, you know, some of those things I need. This is also how I've learned to create safety in my mind. What we will do is take a strategy that is working, take a business model that is working, take a business process that is working and kick up some drama in our businesses as a way to feed that addiction in our brain. It will feel really good because if we think about addiction and drama is an addiction, uh, just to give you context here, what happens in the brain with drama, if you are addicted to that attention seeking behavior or drama, um, it kicks up the same part of your brain that heroin does and it kicks up the same neurotransmitters and it stimulates or releases dopamine and dopamine is basically the neurotransmitter that you can like use it for good or for bad if you want a brain hack. Dopamine is when you're addicted to cocaine or gambling. Dopamine is being fired. It is a neurotransmitter that gives you a really good feeling like that. Yes, things feel amazing and it triggers your brain to want to seek out more of the behavior, more of the thing that created that feel good feeling in the first place. 
you know, I talk a lot, this is like such a side tangent, but I talk a lot about this power of celebration in business. I did a ton of research on celebration. Celebration kicks up dopamine in the brain. So we can get addicted to feeling good from celebration. And what it will train the brain to do is to get addicted to whatever we're celebrating, whatever caused that celebration in the first place. So if you're celebrating small wins in business, you can essentially train your brain to get addicted to whatever those actions you are celebrating in business, to success and to, you know, sharing your content or to making those sales actions. It's a really powerful way to brain hack. So it can be used for good. Not all addiction has to be a bad thing, right? But when we think about dramatic behavior and attention seeking behavior as a way that we have subconsciously learned, you know, as young adults, as children, as a way to self soothe, that is not the healthiest pattern. This isn't a shame thing. Like this is something I've done a lot of work around. So this isn't a shame thing, but it isn't necessarily the healthiest pattern. And we want to be mindful that this is not an addiction that we are feeding in our business because what we will create is very unhealthy patterns in our business. And this is where businesses will start to yo-yo and go up and down and will tend to lack that sustainability. I think, um, um, hey, Manisha, nice to have you here. If we, um, I think relationships can be a, a great parallel to business sometimes. So if we think about this in a relationship example, if you're in a ongoing relationship with someone and you are someone who's addicted to some of that drama or attention seeking behavior, what can happen is the longer you're in a healthy, sustainable relationship, what happens? Things tend to even out at the beginning of a relationship. I mean, talk about what happens in the brain. It's like our brain literally acts like it would if you're addicted to cocaine when you're at the start of a relationship. If you've ever noticed when you're first in love, it's like you can't sleep, you can't eat, your brain is just, it's like, it is, it's basically on drugs. And then the longer you're in a relationship with someone, what happens in a healthy relationship is things tend to even out. And some of that drama tends to fall, fall to the ground, is that even a saying? So some of that drama tends to even out and we have a more even, you know, sustainability. We, we tend to know what to expect in a relationship. What can happen if you're addicted to some of that drama or what we're talking about here as a way that you have learned again, you know, to, to fulfill and meet your needs, what will happen sometimes when things are actually quite healthy in an ongoing relationship and you know, that's a beautiful part of a relationship, you'll confuse the want for some excitement and for the need for drama. And this is when people will sometimes create drama in a relationship, cheating, fighting, um, you know, going out too late and pissing off their partner, or triggering their partner. They'll create drama in the relationship because subconsciously it feels like there's something wrong because they're addicted to the drama and things have really evened out in that part of the relationship. The same thing will happen in business. Usually when you start your business, there's a lot more drama, right? We're trying to figure things out. You're testing different models and strategies. You know, you're booking those first clients. There's a lot of exciting drama. There's things going wrong. There's problems you got to deal with. And as you grow in business and you tend to, you start to create sustainability, if you are a little addicted to drama, the brain will freak the F out and it will tell you that something is wrong. And if you think about addiction and, and when I say addicted to drama, to drama, I mean your brain is literally addicted to the neurotransmitters in your brain that is saying you need to seek out drama to feel safety, to feel enough, to feel, to fulfill those needs. Um, and I'm not a psychi psychiatrist, psychologist, but so any of you who are, you can give us some more of the science behind this. But your brain will, will, I'm not using this as a hyperbole, your brain will be addicted to that. And so then what we wanna be mindful of is in our business is as things start to even out, that we don't confuse the sustainability and the boring systems and processes and things that are working in your business to bring in revenue in a sustainable way that is scalable as a problem and create drama as a way to fulfill an internal personal need that does not serve your business. Let me know if this is making sense and I wanna read the comments. Um, hey Monica, nice to have you here. Tristan says a negative pattern around enoughness was my biggest blind spot during my creative years. It wasn't until much later that I realized it. It manifested itself in different ways for me, but man, such an important topic to cover. Addressing it early will save new entrepreneurs and creatives so much headache. Um, Monica says, oh my God, that sounds like me. Um, to both of you, me too. I mean, I don't know how many of you know my past history, my past story. I spent 10 years acting in LA before starting my business. And one of my 
I mean, this is still a lot. I still work with my coach. This is a lot of the work that still resurfaces for me. It's just something I'm able to like spot in seconds now and shift. But something that sabotaged me quite a lot when I was acting was absolutely the enoughness thing we're talking about here. And I absolutely have some trauma in my life and learned one of my coping strategies and one of the things I learned was there were certain dr dramatic things that I could create. I mean, literally an actress, right? Drama that would bring attention that would make me feel enough that would fulfill what we're talking about here and I sabotage I mean I did work as an actress but I think looking back sometimes if I had the tools and was coaching then how different would my career have been I absolutely sabotaged um, work I remember um, being on set in a film in South Africa I was the lead of a film in South Africa like beautiful experience and I didn't necessarily sabotage my work but I sabotaged the experience because I had so much of my enoughness stuff coming up, I created so much drama outside of the filming experience and was miserable as a result. And it's 100% what we're talking about here. It is that addiction that I am, I am a recovering addict from, but it is that addiction to the drama or the attention seeking behavior that we don't realize we're doing. It's not necessarily, I mean, this, this was like picking fights with people and, and all sorts of things that you wouldn't necessarily on the surface identify as drama in your, in your work, but that's absolutely what it was. And we do this in business as well. What, um, so, and I, I say this just to transparently say, y'all, if you're experiencing this, super, super normal and really important to start to identify and not to make yourself wrong if you identify with this, because usually if we peel back the layers under the surface, there's some real stuff at the core there that's causing us to have these coping mechanisms. If you have a coping mechanism of creating drama, it's not like, why are you being a drama queen? No, 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 no. It's what's going on that that you have a need for this attention that isn't being fulfilled internally how do we address that and then how do we take a look at the business and start to change the narrative in your business that when things in business feel boring because they're sustainable that we're not taking boring to mean there's a problem in business and you need to muck up things to create some of that excitement and drama what I see happens and um, what I found. So one of my clients scaled to a million and this was something, everything we talked about was mindset related for her. And one of the things that kept coming up in for her, and this was a pattern, was the business kept feeling like it wasn't fulfilling her anymore. And it was boring and she was bored with business. And there was a lot of that talk going on. When we peel back the layers, what we, what we found was so much of what we're talking about here and we had to be very mindful to yes find ways obviously for her business to fulfill her but not to confuse the things that she was calling boring as her being bored with her business and it not being her passion anymore because she almost quit her business and this was like right before it blew up that is such sabotage y'all that's such a common way we sabotage and she almost quit it because it felt boring and you know we're all taught as passion driven entrepreneurs follow what lights your I mean that's what I teach right do what lights you up do what you love make money doing what you love and we want to be really mindful if this is our pattern that we're not confusing these things because we you will burn down something that's working that you do actually love because you're confusing ease you're confusing not working hard you're confusing things working really well in your business you're confusing a well-oiled machine you're confusing sales processes that work you're confusing having to rinse and repeat something and not having a bunch of new products and services as boring and being bored with your business and your brain is like i am jonesing for a hit I want a hit of drama that you don't have anymore because the business has become sustainable versus again at the, you know, when you're at the beginning of business or if you're launching a new product, there tends to just be a little more of that drama to kind of, I'm doing this. I don't think this, I don't think anyone does drugs in their wrist y'all, but I'm like hitting my wrist because that's my non-druggy way of saying, um, getting a hit. If you're wondering what I'm doing, let me read these, um, comments. Monica says, I never ever thought that I was addicted to drama. What a freaking breakthrough. Thank you. I do this all the time. Sabotage relationships and business to seek out problems where there isn't any. How to overcome this. Um, thank you for sharing that so openly, Monica. I appreciate you. And I will, I, just to normalize this also for everyone, even if you're not addicted to drama, and this is not to, like, 
let's not create problems that don't exist for some of you who aren't addicted to drama. What I will say is our brain is wired to look for problems. Your brain is wired very simply and that, I mean, it's pretty basic and simple. It wants to keep you safe. It wants to keep you alive. It wants you to feel comfortable. It wants you to avoid pain. It wants you to seek pleasure. It wants to conserve calories. So it wants to do all of those things with the least amount of work possible. And so if your brain has learned something works to get its needs met, meaning if I feel like I'm, I'm gonna use an example here. Let's say you had a really busy mom growing up and she was always working and you learned if I create some drama, my mom stops paying attention to work and she pays attention to me. Your brain creates the shortcut that, oh, when I get dramatic and I start screaming, like let's say you're a little kid, like three years old, I start screaming, I get mom's attention. I get love, I get attention, I feel good, I feel soothed. That feels really great. Let's say you do this every week. You want mom's attention. She's busy working. You scream. You throw all your toys into, you know, outside your playpen. The brain really quickly starts to create this pattern and learn this, like, this works. Um, so when I say addicted to drama, that's what I mean. Like, the brain is just like, this feels good. This works. Um, not addicted like you have a bad addiction and there's something wrong with you. And I want to be really mindful here just so no one is labeling themselves in ways that doesn't serve them. Um, so I think that's just helpful to know. And your brain wants to save calories. So if that works, it doesn't as adults then want to use the extra calories to think of something new and different. And so I think part of this, Monica, to answer your question, part of this is literally just having the awareness that this even exists. So you can start to notice this in your business and start to notice or in relationships, oh, I didn't even notice this before. This is something, my brain just does this because it's like the easy button. This is just like the easy switch. Um, my brain is just, you're not lazy, but our brains are all just lazy. It just wants like, whatever's the shortest path to get my needs met, I'm gonna go for that. And then we can, because we're having that awareness and because we're catching these things, then you can have the check-in of, does this actually serve me? Is this actually, is this actually the path I want to go down? Now that I have the awareness, we can then consciously choose to do something different, to choose a different belief, to choose a different thought, to choose a different story, and to take a different action. And that's how we start to break these patterns. So um, I've absolutely, if we're going to use this analogy, breaking up with this addiction of um, drama, I think I'm someone who's very much broken my addiction with drama. And it was exactly this way. It wasn't like a magic a lot of it was coaching, but a lot of it was also just starting to have the awareness that this was a pattern. And this was just something my brain does. Like, it's not that it's truth. It's not that I have to do this. It's just an automatic, it's just an automatic loop in my brain. And the more I can spot it and notice that that's what my brain is doing, the more it's easier to have, if you almost think of like watching yourself instead of being um, hooked into the behavior. So when we don't have awareness, what happens is we, if you think about thought and feeling, they're like two pieces of paper that are stuck together. If you can have some awareness, it's like there's a little separation. Um, or if you can observe your thoughts, observe what's happening, there's a little separation. And then you don't get hooked by the pattern the same way. As soon as you create a little separation with these patterns, you're then able to consciously choose something different. Oh, I always want to pick fights as a way to create some drama and get some attention when I'm when things start to feel good in a relationship. Isn't that interesting? I'm totally about to do that right now. Let me let me actually choose something different here. And then the more you take action that matches the new way that isn't dramatic essentially, the more you start to break that that pattern in your brain and start to rewire the brain and break that addiction. Um, just the same way if you're if you're addicted to alcohol, the more you're like, oh, I'm addicted to alcohol. I want a beer right now. One beer, like I really want it. That feels like it's gonna give me all, it's gonna meet all my needs. But I can, now that I have this awareness and I see this and I know I'm addicted to this, I can choose, not easy always, but I can choose not to have the beer right now. And the more I choose not to have the beer, the more I, I break that pattern of wanting to just reach for it as the way to self-soothe. Um, I don't know if that's making sense. Um, Liz says, I love how you bring so much psychology somatic work in. It helps me understand myself so much more with compassion and awareness resulting in more choice. Liz, thank you for saying that. That makes me so, so happy to hear. I geek out over the psycholo psychology major, y'all. I geek out, out over this stuff. And I also find for, I mean, 
thank you so much for saying that. I think the more we can understand this and the more we can have compassion with ourselves and see these are just these are just things our brain has learned as a way, literally we're always doing the best we know how. I think that's just such a helpful thing to remember. So anything we're doing, even if it on the surface doesn't serve us, we're doing it because somewhere, somehow it's meeting our needs. Somewhere along the way we've learned whatever it is we're doing, we've learned this is going to help us feel safe. It's gonna help us avoid pain. It's gonna help us seek pleasure. It's gonna help us feel comfortable. And so I think the more we can see that, the less we can shit on ourselves and make ourselves feel wrong and beat up on ourselves. And the nicer we are to ourselves, the more compassion we have for ourselves, the easier it is then to actually come in, um, you know, observe our thoughts and actually come in from a more empowered place to choose something, something new that will serve us in business. And when it comes to business, I always say this, the strategy in business, not that complicated, y'all, you know, taking action, we have to do it. What, what so much of business success kind of bringing this back full circle comes back to then is our mindset. And this will get in our way all day long. And the more we can have compassion, and understand what's going on with this, the less we can get out of our way. And the more we can approach our business like CEOs, like business owners, instead of like the wounded, hurt three-year-old or seven-year-old that is bringing all of their patterns into their business and asking our business to self-soothe or to you know fulfill our needs and i think that is just I, i've made the joke before is there a seven-year-old running your business for a lot of us i think it's just starting to have the awareness oh when i'm sabotaging my business it's just the seven-year-old in me that's running the business how do i love on my seven-year-old self and take my adult self and have my adult self run my business because my adult self knows that when things are kind of boring in business, that's actually a really great thing. And I can get my excitement, my passion met from innovation, met from my creativity, met from new ideas. But the way that I turn those ideas, the way I turn that creativity, the way I turn that innovation into money is by rinsing and repeating in a pretty boring way, some processes and systems. Uh, Monica says so helpful. Um, oh, I'm so happy to hear it. I think, um, what that makes me think of on one of our lives a few weeks ago we were talking about i have i work with a few authors um who and i think something that always comes up with authors and writing books is we think about like oh i love to write i like love to write books how do you do that and i think what we forget so often it's the same thing with acting oh i love to act i love to act and i think what is so easy to forget is we think about just the finished product the finished book or being on set as an actress and like actually being in the work and or the finished film and what we often forget is usually to have the finished book usually to get on set whatever these creative pro processes uh processes we like to engage in are there's usually kind of a bunch of mundane boring work that happens behind the scenes to make that happen if you're going to write a book you might love to write but there's a lot of boring editing and sitting your butt in the chair and just writing the book if you're an actress I love being on set, but it also meant there was a lot of boring work memorizing lines. Like, no, memorizing lines, not that exciting, y'all. Um, but that boring work was really important. And that boring work was like the crux of what gave the results. That's what allowed you to have a great performance on set. Sitting your butt down and writing a book, writing page after page and doing the editing and doing um, the submissions to, to agents, that boring work is what gets a book completed in a book out into the world. If we think about business, it's, I, I love all of my, my heart-centered coaches. I can't tell you how many of my heart-centered coaches are like, I didn't become a coach to market my business. I just love to coach and marketing is boring. I hate marketing. Marketing is boring. And it's kind of the same thing we're talking about here. It's like, if you can learn to see that boring stuff as boring is the fuel that allows you to do the exciting work. And if you can start to notice how, if there is that want for drama, when you don't love some of that boring work, how easy it is to go in there and sabotage the boring because you just so badly want that hit, the more you'll be able to do the things that light you up and that do really fuel and sustain you. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think if I had another example here I wanted to share. Um, let me just see if we have any comments. Okay, so I think just to kind of close this out, unless you all have any questions, I think um, let's talk a little bit about the, the other side. So we've been talking about how drama can be a very 
addictive thing. We've talked about why. And, and just as a reminder again, and it's okay if drama or attention seeking is something you find yourself falling into. Again, to what Liz was saying, I think this is just a great place to have so much compassion with yourself always, but particularly something like this, because more often than not, there's, and again, I, I say trauma with a lowercase C or capital T, not as a, to trigger anyone, but just oftentimes there is something underneath it that is causing these behaviors. And so just so, so much love and compassion for yourself. And a reminder that not only are these patterns in the brain, if, you know, if this is a pattern that's, let's say you've had it for 20 years, this is a pattern that it has really, you have a strong groove in your brain that's been, you know, going on for 20 years, but drama in particular, what the heightened action of drama is literally also reinforcing that loop in your brain because it kicks up the same neurotransmitters as heroin, as heroin, you guys. Heroin is like one of the most addicting drugs in the world. So if this is a pattern of yours, I say all this to just be so easy and compassionate with yourself and just to start to see if you can create some awareness and start to check in with your business is my business a place that I am trying to create drama? Is my business a place I'm trying to create problems that don't exist? Oh, and this is what I was saying earlier that I kind of went off on a tangent. Even if you're not addicted to drama, the brain is wired to look for problems. It's it's like a self, uh, self-protection survival mechanism thing. Our brain, it's just like all day long, all it does is look for problems. That is like on default mode. It's like, where is the problem? Right now, because of what's going on in our world, because of corona, because of you know, we're all in a little, we're in a height, even if you feel fine, we are in a heightened state of, of fear, of scarcity, of, you know, just different things being kicked up. Your brain is in hyperdrive. Even if you feel perfectly fine, I, like, I think I'm, I'm, I feel very grateful. I am fine. Even though I'm in New York City, I feel fine with Corona. I'm very, very blessed. And yet I know my brain is on hyperdrive looking for problems because that is how my brain is designed to keep me safe. If we think back to hunter-gatherer days, And you think about like, you know, living in the plains, your brain, if you were just like chilling out, was always like, is there a tiger that's going to come and eat me? I need to just keep looking to see, is there something that's going to eat me? And we're designed to be part of um, tribes as a way to stay safe. And we're all in social isolation right now. So your brain is just already in hyperdrive. So even if you're not addicted to drama, your brain is wired to look for problems. So if you find your in that space, we want to be extra mindful right now with our business because when you're at home and you're in social isolation and your business is your obsession, the easiest place to look for problems and to look for drama to either feed that need for a drama addiction or just to self like, oh, I found a problem. Now I feel safe is in your business. It is just like the easiest place ever because if you look for problems in your business, you will find them. No matter how amazing and wonderful and 18 figures your business is, if you look for problems in your business, you will find them. And so it's just such an easy place to allow the brain to worm in and create problems that don't need to be fixed. And then particularly what we're talking about now is if you have a little bit of that um, need for drama, it is just so addictive it's like, oh, I found one thing and then I found another thing. And then suddenly, instead of moving your business forward in a really boring fashion, this time can be a time where you're just putting out 14 fires that you created yourself. Um, Tristan said, so true, Ari, the dream versus the day-to-day. Same with musicians who pick up their career for freedom, not realizing a label will tell them where to be and what to do 280 days out of the year. Um, and thank you for the the hearts. Was, oh, Mary. Hi, Mary. Nice to have you here. Thank you for the hearts. Um, Tristan's bringing this back to what we were chatting about before, just in terms of the boring piece. And I think this is this is the antidote. So the antidote to your drama, the antidote to searching for problems is this reminder that, well, a few reminders, but I think one of the reminders is what Tristan is speaking to and just knowing that boring isn't a problem. Boring isn't a bad thing. If something feels boring, that doesn't actually mean there's a problem in your business. That doesn't mean you are bored with your business. That probably means you're doing things right. That probably means leave things alone. If I'm bored memorizing my lines, that means I'm memorizing my lines and doing it right. If I'm feeling like I need to kick up some drama and pick a fight with someone when I'm running my lines, I'm not actually moving myself forward 
you know, in, in, uh, in my acting career. Same with um, what Tristan's speaking about. I think musicians are such a great, like the stereotypical musicians. I have a lot of dear friends who are musicians. We hear about what they do most of the time is they're rehearsing and they're rehearsing and they're rehearsing and then someone's telling them where to go to perform. And if we use this example of like the um, stereotypical musician, I'm not saying this is actually the truth, but what gets um, portrayed in the news, we can see how this want for drama gets kicked up in a musician's life. The stereotypical musician is what, they're drinking too much, they're sabotaging their shows because, you know, they're hooking up with the groupies. I don't think that actually happens all as much as TV wants us to believe, but I think those TV stereotypes are a great example of what we're talking about. What actually creates a sustainable success for a musician is some of these boring, mundane things happening behind the scenes and that doesn't mean those boring things are bad and that doesn't mean there isn't a lot of fulfillment and excitement in the work it's just a lot of times that fulfilling work is created by a lot of boring um, repetitive steps ahead of time and if we think about the stereotypical i don't know like thinking of well, who am i thinking of this is like 80s rockers who would like have those big parties and like smash their guitars who might someone tell me i'm horrible at musician names but if we think about those stereotypical things we hear or we see in tv that's a great example of how that addiction to drama will sabotage sustainability and scalability in a, in a business if you're a musician and that's what you do after show you're out for a few days or you might lose your label or you might lose your record deal so same same in business if your business is doing well and you're like, well, I'm bored. I need to like kick up some things here. I think it's just great to notice, oh, wait a second. Let me pause. Let me create some awareness around this. Let me see, is that actually true? Um, or is my brain really like itching for some drama here and wanting to create, use my business as a way to soothe? Or is my brain doing that thing because I'm bored right now and I just like, or I feel unsafe because of the news and I'm looking for a problem? Almost two different things. Um, let me know if that makes sense. I'm just checking my notes because I feel like I had 18 other things I wanted to share with you and we went off on tangents. Mm. This is what I wanted to close with because I wanted to make sure that I left you with not just the awareness piece, but just some other things to think about here. So I think, yes, the awareness piece what I talk with my clients a lot about is if we're, if we know this is the case, we're going to have compassion. We're going to work on these things outside of business. And then just a reminder, when you are working in your business, adult you, CEO you runs the business. The you, seven-year-old you, 10-year-old you, three-year-old you, whoever created those patterns gets to have all the time and space to work through what's going on outside of running your business. And I think it's really great just to create some separation. So when you notice let's say with Corona right now, you notice this is a little heightened. You're at home, you're isolated, you're feeling a little bored, you're wanting some more attention. Get, take care of younger you, some people call it the inner child, people call it a lot of different things. Take care of that outside of your business so that in your business, you can come in from a more grounded place and run it as the CEO. I think outside of your business, knowing if we know that so much of the addiction to drama, attention seeking behavior, this want to even create problems that don't exist. So much of this is triggered by that enoughness, not feeling good enough, feeling lonely, um, wanting to find ways to self-soothe, wanting to find ways to feel loved, wanting to find ways to feel safe. You know, if you think about um, little like young, young, young babies, um, even if you think about what do they learn? They learn if I scream and I, and if my mom's not near, not near if I scream, mom's going to come over and take care of me. That is literally safety. And so a lot of these things we learn from such a young age. So if we know this, then we know the mindset work. If this is a pattern that's showing up, the mindset work that needs to be done outside of the business is really doubling down and focusing on what mindset work do I need to do around feeling good enough? What mindset work do I need to do around loving myself? What mindset work do I need to do around, um, you know, we were talking about even celebrating the small wins, celebrating those small wins in my business. So I'm creating an addiction around that. What um, mindset work do I need to do around creating safety? Do I have a lot of fear being kicked up right now? Do I need to do some, some fear work? And this way you can, you can start to address these patterns outside of business. And I promise you it's all connected. The more you're able to take care of yourself outside of business, the more than in business when things are boring and mundane, the less likely you are 
going to be to want to kick, create a problem that doesn't exist or to create drama within the business or with a client or with a payment um, or decide you need to create this. This happens so often, y'all. I think the most common one is suddenly I need to create a whole new business. I don't, this isn't my thing anymore, which like, let, like check in on that one because sometimes that's just the brain where it's like, I am bored. I am bored, I am bored, give me attention, I know what will feel exciting, burning this down and creating a whole new business. And so these are things particularly right now, just things to check in with and be a little extra mindful of because there's just a lot more being churned up in our world that is triggering everyone's brain everyone no matter how amazing and well adjusted you are everyone's brain is just being triggered a little bit and just knowing that this is the case so that you can really do that work on the outside of your business so you're not sabotaging the results in your business liz says mindset work as self-care is uh mind-blowing um i love you liz my my i personally think mindset work is the best form of self-care and this is such a different tangent um, if Manisha's still here, she's heard me rant about this before. I also think this is not what we were talking about today, but I also think this is a reminder, y'all, sometimes self-care is the shit we don't want to do that's good for us, like mindset work or, you know, doing the uncomfortable thing. I think sometimes we think self-care, I think particularly right now, like we think it's just like, let me go get some booze and wine or hop on a Zoom call. Not that that isn't important, it is. I've been doing that too. However, I think what we forget is real self-care. The whole point of self-care is taking care of ourselves, And so often the things that help us the most and take care of us the most are the things we don't want to do in the moment, are the uncomfortable things, are the things that stretch us, are the challenging things, are the things that feel like all of our nerve endings are being exposed in the moment because we're doing the work to shift thought patterns thought patterns that feel really comfortable and soothing and that we've learned as a way to self-soothe. So I hope that is a helpful distinction for you all. Um, sometimes mindset work doesn't feel warm and fuzzy in the moment. Um, Mary says, so true. Thank you, Mary. All right, you all, let me know if you have any questions before I hop off. I love you. Thank you all for hanging and having a conversation around this. I hope this was helpful. Um, so much love to everyone. So, so, so much love. And just such a reminder, take care of yourselves. Remember to do that mindset work and remember to not make yourself wrong so that you can keep your business just nice and boring so it's bringing in those results. And I promise you, boring can still bring a lot of excitement and fulfillment. Um, unless there's any other questions, I will let you all know I have a free training happening in two weeks that I'm really excited about. Um, let's see if I can remember the name. Unleash your money making magic so you can make bank. Um, we talk about money a lot in this group. We talk about making money a lot in this group. We talk about the mindset behind money a lot in this group. And I had a, I do, um, my coach calls it CEO time, but it's basically white space brainstorming time. I had some brainstorming time recently and I had a download of something that has to do with money mindset that I have not seen anywhere in the industry and it it felt like the missing piece to help unlock so many blocks things that i think block us from in a money mindset perspective for making money and literally while i was writing this download out and um creating this process while i was writing this someone paid me and i booked a discovery call and then i tried it again the next day and the same thing happened so there is something to this and i'm really excited to share it with you i think it's really really powerful and completely free. So I'm going to make sure I drop the link for this. I would love to have you join me. I'm really excited to share this process with you. And I'm also excited because it came from here and I don't think anyone else is talking about this. So you can't get this anywhere else. It'll be in two weeks. I'll make sure I drop the link for that. Sign up and join me so that we can talk all about how to shift those mindset stories for good so that you can open yourself up to receive more money, which is so important if you want to make money doing what you love. And then I'll see you. Oh, I got a comment here and then I will let you all to your evening. Um, Liz says, thank you so much. My pleasure. Mary says, thank you. My pleasure. Um, Mary saying La Laloni. Oh my gosh. I'm probably pronouncing your name incorrectly. How do I? La Laloni. Tell me if I'm saying your name correctly. She says, this is so good. I do this. It is my secret. And I got called out on it the other day. Thank you so much for shedding light. Thank you for being so transparent and sharing that with us. I think it's so helpful and we can all just say, Hey, me too. I do this also. This is completely normal. 
and that helps us all collectively I think shed and shift these patterns a little bit the more we normalize it the more it's like oh I need to feel shameful for this when we can say hey I do this too and the more than we can see it in one another so thank you for being so open all of you today for sharing this so transparently I think it just helps all of us and I appreciate all of you for that thank you for hanging with me I love you all take care of yourself Stephanie says awareness is one key to change um I think awareness Stephanie is just a yes I just to close on that I think it is so much of change I think it is the majority of change if we it's really hard to change the things we're not aware of. I think so much of coaching is helping people have awareness around their blind spots. I know so often, it, you know, we can't see past the tip of our own nose and that's the power of coaching. And as soon as we have awareness, then we know the things we have to change. Then, you know, it doesn't always mean that change is easy, but it's like, that is the, that is the, um, not the tipping point, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, the catalyst for change. And I think it's probably 90% or more of change starts with that awareness piece. So thank you, Stephanie, for saying that. I really, I really, really agree with that. Um, Leelani, Leelani, did I say that correctly? Leelani, what a beautiful name, such a beautiful name. All right, y'all, um, I've said this 18 times. I love you all, thank you for hanging with me. If you're watching on the replay or now and you have questions or I missed a comment, leave it below, tag me. I will always come back. Um, thanks for being in the group. I will be back next Tuesday with another live and then we'll have that free training soon. I, I'm like itching to share this with you. I cannot wait to share it with you. I hope you love it as much as me and I hope it's as powerful for you as it is for me and have a good night. Bye.